All right, folks, again, welcome to Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena for today's press conference and practice day. And we're starting today with the Yale student athletes, uh, Alex Copeland to my left, your right, Mia Oni and Blake Reynolds with us today. Well, uh, if you could guys just get close to the microphones, we've got microphones out here going around the uh, media center. Uh, raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. And uh, let's start off with the first question. If you have a question, raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. And uh, by the way, uh, we'll start with Gene here in the middle. Locker room is open right now for Yale, uh, and the Yale head coach will come up right after these guys here. Let's go right here in the middle. Right here. Okay, thanks. Uh, name and affiliation, please. Uh, Gene, for, Gene Fournette from the Florida Times Union. Uh, any, for any of you that want to answer this, could you just talk a little bit, uh, give a little bit of insight to people who, who don't get to see Ivy League basketball, whether on television or whatever, and you know there might be a perception about the, the skill level. Cornell came here in 2010 and and got to the Sweet 16. Could you just talk a little bit about how maybe the per, what the outside perception of Ivy League basketball may differ from the actual product? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's I think it's getting better every year. Um, I think the athleticism and, and, and the talent in the league is getting better. Um, you know, every year as we go, and I think a lot of people don't don't get the chance to see that, but. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I think you know. I think we'll bring that to this turn to, to this first round here. Um, just just showcase that that talent and athleticism that we do actually have, and that that high level of basketball that's in the Ivy League. Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Next question, right here in the middle. Uh, Barry's coming your way. Just a reminder: uh, no cell phone video photos are allowed in here, but no video, please. Thank you. Uh, hello, this is Clayton Freeman with the. Four times Union. Um, you know, th the Ivy League history in Jacksonville has been pretty noted over the years. Cornell getting to the Sweet 16, um, Harvard having a, giving a major um, scare to UNC a few years ago. Um, what uh, um, is that something that the guys talk about? You know, maybe a little bit of a good luck charm factor with with Jacksonville and maybe a chance to sort of carry in a little. Ivy League legacy down here? What do you think, Alex? Uh, not exactly, but but we definitely know that um, you know, teams from our conference have been able to come into the tournament, just like uh, Blake and I did uh, as freshmen um, you know, a few years back against Baylor. And we, you know, teams from our conference have been able to come here and have success. Um, and so we're not afraid of anything here. We're, you know, we feel confident. Um, we know the teams before us have done it. We feel like we're capable of doing it. Um, and so we're you know, excited to be here and get a chance to, to showcase that. Next question, raise your hand, we'll get a microphone. Let's go here on the right, Barry, uh, your left here. Name and affiliation, please. Uh, Will McCormack, Yale Daily News. Um, before you even knew you were playing LSU on Sunday, um, how familiar were you guys with Tremont Waters and his game, you know, him being from New Haven, um, getting recruited by Yale? Yeah, we hadn't heard from you yet. What do you think? Uh, <clears throat> um, I think we were all we all knew who he was, and some of us had played with him and played against him in different parts. He comes back home for summer a lot, so um, we know he's a quick point guard. He's really talented, and yeah. Another question. Raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you uh, in the back, please. Yes. Uh, Reggie Chapman, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Um, you guys are three of, I think, four starters that are in double di that average double-digit points a game. I mean, what is it about you guys offensively that makes you so dangerous? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, um, I think we got a really deep, deep team, especially on the offensive end. You know, we got a lot of guys that can uh, can contribute, and a lot of guys that can put the ball in the hole. Um, and I think you know it can be a different guy any given night that can hurt you. So I think that's what makes our team uh, pretty special is that we got a, got seven, eight, nine different guys we can throw out there any night that can that can really make a big impact on the game. On the aisle in the middle, Mark Long with AP, Alex for Alex and Blake. You you kind of touched on this earlier, but the 2006 ex, 2016 experience against Baylor. Uh, how different does this feel than that? And how much? more confident are you being that you've been on this stage 
and played some, you know, two of those teams? Yeah, um, it, it definitely feels pretty different. I think as freshmen, um, I didn't actually get on the court. Blake did, and he hit a three against Baylor, which is pretty awesome. Um, but uh, I think there was definitely an element of kind of feeling like you were just along for the ride a little bit. Um, and as much as I enjoyed that, I think, you know, I, I have vivid memories of being on the bus leaving March Madness and saying, okay, you know, I got to try to get back here before I graduate. Um, and to be able to do that as, as one of the leaders of this team feels really special and just feels like, um, you know, a bit of a dream come true. I think that coming here and seeing it before, it kind of put that dream into your mind. And we were lucky to have really great seniors and, and really great leaders before us that were able to kind of bring some clarity to that vision. And I think when you can have a dream combined with um, a little bit of a, a, a plan and a vision and, and a blueprint of how to do it, I think you can you know, try to do something really special. Here in the middle, yes, Gene. Gene, Gene Fournette from the Times Union. This is for all three of you. Could you please tell us how heavily you were recruited coming out of high school, whether you got any athletic scholarships from somebody, and if so, why did you ultimately choose Yale? Mia, you want to start us off? <laughs> um, so at first, I, w I didn't have any Division I offers, and then I committed to Williams College Division Three school before my senior year. Played out my senior year. Um, then after my senior year, a lot of Ivy League schools, Patriot League schools contacted me, and I committed to Yale after, after like June or July after my senior year. The admissions was closed, so I had to go to prep school for a year at Suffield Academy, and then I joined Yale for the 2016 class. Hit the mic, please, Gene. I was kidding. How challenging is the financial commitment for your families? Because I'm assuming that, you know, I, other than need-based financial aid, that not every single dollar of your, of your education is paid for. Uh, oh, you got it. Go ahead, Alex. I think that um, when you sign up to, to go to a school like Yale, um, it's one of those things where it didn't really, even as just like 18-year-olds making a decision, um, I think something that, that uh, our coaches tried to, to, to really kind of drive home with us in the recruiting process was that it wasn't a four-year decision. Um, you know, there were definitely sacrifices that we'd have to make, whether it was financial or you know, maybe not being like, you know, quote unquote, a high major school. But um, you know, we we're making a 40-year decision. You know, something that there was an investment in, in our futures and you know, having an opportunity one to be on a stage like this. Um, you know, but also to have like one of the best you know academic um, experiences and, and educations that's that's around. Uh, any other athletic scholarships for you? Yeah, I had a couple. Yep. Blake, what about you on the far end? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, there was definitely you know um, other interests. The, the my junior summer, that's when I actually first really started playing uh, like summer AAU basketball and started getting some exposure. Um, <clears throat> I'm a, I'm a Midwestern kid, so um, a lot of like Missouri Valley Conference schools and um, just schools in the Midwest areas like that. Um, and then when Yale reached out, you know, uh, I thought that was just an incredible opportunity. I didn't really, you know, know much about the Ivy League or Ivy League basketball at the time. But um, yeah, once I got up there on campus and got to know the coaching staff and, and kind of what the program was about, that's, you know, I decided that was the right decision for me. We've got time for a couple more questions. We'll go here in the back and then down here in the front. Thank you. Uh, Reggie Chapman, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Um, you guys are a high-scoring offense in the, uh, in the Ivy League. LSU is one of the high, most high-scoring offenses in the SEC. What is it about them that you've seen that makes them so difficult to guard, and um, what kind of game are you trying to expect? More of a shootout, or do you think you guys are going to try and make it more of a slower game? Go ahead, Mia. You want to start us off with that one? Yeah, LSU has a great offense. They have a lot of a lot of key pieces to their offense. They're pretty balanced. Um, they're not fairly deep, but they are pretty balanced with who they play. And um, I feel like we're kind of similar. I feel like we're a little deeper. We're also a very balanced team. And we both try to play in transition a lot, but we both can slow it down to run the half-court set. So it should be a fairly interesting offensive game. Anything to add, guys? You all good on that? Perfect. Uh, down here in the front row, in the middle. Jeff Duncan with the Times-Picayune in New Orleans. This is for Alex. Kind of 
piggybacking on that last question, there's a school of thought in these kind of games um, that you slow it down to play a quote unquote high major, like you say. You all play up tempo. So you you gonna run with this LSU team tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. Um, we feel really confident, one, in um, our style of play, but also the, the actual talent level of the guys we have on the court. Um, and so we're, we're going to play our game. I think that, you know, we're, like any game, we're going to see how, how things are flowing, how things are going. Um, you know, if it starts to suit us better to slow it down and really, you know, kind of grind them offensively, then, you know, I, th I think we'll try to do that in the half court. But you know, if we're having success in transition, you know, I, I feel like we have guys that can run with anyone. Perfect, guys. Thank you very much. Good luck to you tomorrow. Appreciate it. The Yale locker room is open, by the way. Uh, the head coach, James Jones, will be here in just a few minutes. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. I've got Coach Jones here with Yale. Uh, again, same as before. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We've got about 15 minutes or so, Coach. I know you're excited for that. So glad to have you here. Welcome to Jackson. We just want to start us off with, uh, you know, the way your season, the regular season, ended to get into the tournament here. Um, your second time being in the NCAA's, correct? Yes, it is. So you get a little closer to the mic too. We're real excited to be here, obviously. Um, we had a great end to our regular season uh, in our tournament with a couple of wins over two really good uh, Ivy League basketball teams. And we felt all year that we were the better team in the league, and I thought we proved it in terms of our non-conference, our win-loss record. And it was great to be able to prove it on our home floor uh, and get ourselves down here to, and, 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 and into the NCAA tournament. All right, we'll start here on the left. Jeff, Jeff Zilg at USA Today. James, could you walk us maybe through the recruiting process for Mie and how he ended up at Yale? And was there ever a time where you wondered maybe if he would go elsewhere when the recruiting picked up? Well, um, I believe it was uh, after his senior year, we got a call from Robert Eichardt, who is his AAU coach, um, BTI, I believe, out of um, Southern California. And he said he had a kid that uh, we should really take a look at. And he sent us some film on him. And uh, I took a look at the film, and the first time in my career I ever offered a kid after watching the film. One, and it wasn't even a game, it was like a highlight, but he had done some things in the highlight tape that were just so exceptional. Um, you know, I was born at night, but not last night, and I could figure it out, right? And uh, so we offered Mie, and he and his father flew out to Yale on their own dime. And uh, they spent, they were supposed to spend like a, a half a day with us, and they got mixed up in traffic, and I believe they visited Columbia and Yale and Dartmouth on the same trip, or Princeton, might have been, whatever the case. So they only spent like an hour and a half at Yale. So we sat down and we talked, and um, I had a good feel for them, and I thought they had a good feel for me. Shortly thereafter, he had gone to uh, Stanford's elite camp, and they didn't offer him an opportunity. And after that, uh, he committed to Yale. And that was somewhere in, in April or May of his senior year, and uh, then in July, he went out and he played uh, in Las Vegas in uh, Fab 48. And uh, he played better than anybody I've ever recruited in a, um, in a summer tournament. Um, they played against Thorne Macon's team from Canada. 
and it was uh, Mie and a kid, Cohen, who's at Lehigh, were the only Division I players on their BTI team, and they ended up beating them. And Mie was absolutely tremendous. And Johnny Dawkins, you know, came up to me after the tournament or after one of the games, and he goes, oh, guys, you got a good one. I made a mistake on him because he was just that good. And um, his father um, is committed to education, and um, Mie is committed to education. And um, although that other people came in recruiting him, they had committed to us, and they uh, kept their commitment because of the people that they are. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you uh, right here in the middle. Coach, could you just talk about the challenge? Once you got, had, had gotten the job, could you just talk about the challenge in the Ivy League? I mean, we all, everybody's very familiar with the traditions that Princeton's established there, that Penn and Harvard's had their run. How tough was it to, you know, to be, to come in and sort of, crack that and sort of become the, the standard bearer, if you will, for that league? Well, I was an assistant coach for Dick Kuchin for a couple of years. And while being at Yale, I understood um, the power of the name and what it was all about and uh, what a great institution that it is. So I was at Ohio University as an assistant coach when the job opened up and I interviewed. And in my thought process, after talking to people, they were wondering why I would want to go to Yale um, out of 310 Division I teams, Yale was ranked 308 when I took over the job. Uh, and they would ask me that question, and my answer would be because it's Yale. Um, I felt like if I, couldn't, if I could not convince young men that we could win and that they were going to get the best education in the world, well, then I was probably in the wrong business. And I felt that you know, Yale was such a, a great place academically and I felt really good about what we were going to do basketball-wise, that we could convince people that uh, we could make special things happen. And in getting to it, what the, the biggest challenge we had is that we had no basketball history. There's, you know, you walk into our gym, there, you know, there wasn't 40 banners up of championships. There wasn't guys who, you know, several guys who played in the NBA or whatever the fa fact may be. So we had to start our own history. Um, and we have, and we've done a great job with that. And I, I've had wonderful assistant coaches who have gone out and beaten the bushes and found young men that of quality academically and athletically to help us win championships. And we finally got our program to the point where we're going to be good every year. And I think that's the challenge, right? We, we've been fairly consistent, you know, uh, since I've been a head coach at Yale, and this is my 20th season, we finished in the top half of the league 19 times. And the only time we didn't was that first year when we finished five and nine and we were in fifth place. That's the worst, the worst we've ever done since I've been the head coach. And that consistency has been pretty good, but we don't want to be consistent. We want to be great, right? We want to win the league most every other year. And, and um, hopefully we continue to try to bring in quality student athletes like Mia, Blake, and uh, Alex and have a chance to win every year. Next question here in the middle. Yes, sir. Hey, Coach, Jacques Doucet, WAFB-TV in Baton Rouge. I don't expect you to get into your game plan here at a press conference, but um, you've been known for playing an up-tempo game. This might be the best collection of athletes you've gone up against, but also the, the slower tempo has given them trouble this year, teams like Florida. So how do you go about you know, doing that? Well, certainly LSU is a really athletic team. We did play Duke this year. They're not bad, I heard. Um, so that being said, we have seen, and, and this, you know, this collection of guys that, that you're talking about, um, they've, they've had some schedules over their, their four years at Yale, so we've seen some players. And one of the things I did last night was um, I watched uh, our Baylor game. Uh, it's on my laptop, and I like to look at it every now and again to make myself feel better about my life. And, uh, and I watched the game, and um, we played them straight up. We guarded them man-to-man -man in the post. We didn't switch. We didn't double. Um, we did what we normally do. And we, we were able to do that because we were good enough. And uh, I think this is a really good team. And, you know, offensively, we're a pretty good offensive team as well, right? We shoot, I think we're like sixth in the country with field goal percentage offense. Um, so that being said, uh, we want to play our basketball game. And if, um, if that's good enough, it's going to be good enough. It's not, it's not. But we want to play our basketball game, and we want to be the team. We want to be true to who Yale basketball is. And, and uh, we're going to try to go out and do that tomorrow. Got time for a few more here in the front. Yes. Uh, Brian Jackson, WJXT TV here in Jacksonville. I've got a local kid, Austin Williams, on your team. Doesn't necessarily get a whole lot of minutes, but whenever you call his number, he seems like he goes out there and produces. So what does that say about his character? Well, you listen, um, we had a game against Princeton at Princeton, and um, 
we got into a situation where we needed to call his number. Um, I couldn't get some guys out of a game, and both post guys were in the game from the start to about the 12-minute mark. And if I, we normally have one post sub, and that's Paul Atkinson off the bench. And then if I would have left another guy in, they would have been in for like, you know, 10 or 12 straight minutes, and uh, that's more than I'd like to give them. So we called Austin's number, and he proceeded to go in and score a couple of baskets for us. And uh, it speaks volumes to the character he is. It's, it's, you don't know how hard it is to go to practice every day and not play in the game and reap the benefits um, and, and sit on a bench and wait for your number to be called. Um, but what you do is you come to practice every day so when your number is called, you're ready. And, uh, you know, Austin has done that for us, and uh, he's been a tremendous kid. And, and one of the hardest things you do as a coach is to manage expectations because everybody has expectations. You know, I was better than everybody I ever played against. Just ask me. Right? Um, and so everybody feels that way. And I have a locker room of guys that feel the same way. So it's important for us to make sure we make sure that everyone knows they're, they're vested in what we do. And just because you don't go out and score the points or get the rebounds or make the assists, you still are really important to yell basketball and what we do. And I believe that Austin feels that way. And that's one of the way, reasons why he's able to go in a game and have him played in like six or seven, eight or 10 in a row and be able to be successful because um, he's worked hard for his opportunity and was just waiting for it. Got time for two or three more. We'll go in the back here to start. Hey, Coach, uh, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. I'm Reggie Chapman. Um, you, have, you have four different starters that are all in double figures. Obviously, Mieoni is your leading scorer. Um, for people that don't get a chance to watch too much Ivy League basketball, um, what is Mie like? And also, what is it like to be as deep to have four players that can be in double figures every night? Yeah. Well, well, Mie might be the most competitive kid I've ever coached. Um, he doesn't like to lose at anything. And he'll bite, scratch, and claw, claw to get a win, right? He's one of those kind of kids. So that being said, it's a tremendous to have him uh, in, the, in the locker room with us because he keeps you on your toes, right? If, you, if you're not ready to go, you're going to get hurt uh, one way or the other. In any event, so it's great to have him as part of it. And having a, a well-rounded team of of guys who can score. I have basically seven starters. You know, like Azar Swain and Paul Atkinson come off the bench, but they're starters. They play starters minutes, and they're good enough to start on most every team in our league. And we're fortunate to have a really good basketball club and have those guys as part of it. And when I say they're all starters, whenever any of those seven guys are off the bench, out of the game and on the bench, I'm trying to find a way to get them back in the game. And we have some other guys, like we talked about Austin Williams and Eric Monroe. Um, who come in and help us from time to time. But those seven guys are really tremendous, and it's great to have a well-balanced team where you know any one of those guys can give you 20 on any night. And as you look over our last five or six games, you know, Mie has been a consistent scorer for us, and so has Alex Copeland. But we've had other guys lead us in scoring, too. Blake Reynolds and, and Jordan Bruner have been a huge part of what, what we do. And, you know, and, and Azar Swain goes out and makes goes four for five from the arc against uh, Harvard in the championship game. So we have a lot of guys that can hurt you. Um, so it's, it's great to have that kind, of, um, that kind of balance in your offense so you can win games. Two more. We'll go here in the middle, and then you next. Mark Long with the Associated Press. Uh, you talked about the Baylor game. Do you let the players watch it, or did you show that to them? No, that's 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 a personal thing with me. I'm, I, I got it on my lap, on my desktop. Excuse me, on my laptop. It's it's on. Uh, um, I have it there, so I can watch anytime I want. And I've, you know, every now and again, I'll just take some uh, pointers from it. I I like to see what we were doing, and and how we were successful. Well, going back to that though, how much do you think just going through that experience with your three senior starters, you know, Blake and Trey and Alex, how much do you think they that will help them yeah. going through this, through going through it again? Well, I, I think that you know, once you go and you win it and you break that break that lid, you kind of believe, you know. And if you can't, it's hard to achieve if you don't believe. So I think our guys in the locker room are confident about who they are and about the the guys that are st sitting next to them. So if you have a belief that you can win, it's got to start there. So there's no fear in the guys' eyes and. You know, we watched some tape of uh, LSU play yesterday, and I saw some guys kind of like, you know, twitching a little bit when they, they saw a lob dunk a Nas going up and, and tipping it back in or the dunk or, you know, Scala coming down the middle and hammering on somebody's head. But, you know, again, we have some pretty good highlights on, from our club as well, and I think there's a lot of confidence in the room, and it's derived from wins that you've had in the past. Final question here in the middle. 
Coach uh, Bobby Phil's uh, quite a legend at Southern University there in Baton Rouge, the teams he played on and everything. What's it like to coach his son, and what are some things you can share about his son to you know those watching back in Baton Rouge? Yeah, yeah. Um, Trey Phil's is perhaps one of the better people on this planet. He's the kind of guy you want your daughter to marry. I don't know if you have any daughters, but if you do, try to get his number. Um, you'd be happy to have him as a, as a son-in-law. A uh, tremendous person, tremendous kid, tremendous basketball player, um, tremendous athlete, uh, and it's just, he's kind of the glue of who we are. Um, and what I mean by that, he, his, his task every single game is to guard the team's best player. And whether that be the one, two, or the three, Trey's got him, and everybody knows it. And to be that selfless person to go out and just to defend, because after every single game that every kid has ever played, the first question they dare ask, how many points did you score? Not who'd you stop, not how many rebounds you got, not how many assists, how many points did you score? So knowing that's gonna be the case and, and, and knowing that he's not, a, not the kid that's gonna score the most points every night, um, it takes a very selfless person to be able to go out and do that. And he's one of the most selfless, hardest working kids that I've ever coached and it's been a joy. And uh, lastly here, like I have four seniors and uh, I've taken some time here, um, most every single practice over the last, we've had like 100 practices so far this year. Um, over the last, I'd say 30 to 35, I made a point to try to have grab a smile with each one of my seniors for some reason or another, just to talk to them individually, because they're gonna be gone uh, in a year. And sometimes you get addition by subtraction. Uh, that's not the case with these guys. It's gonna be subtraction by subtraction. Um, we, we will be lesser of a team when they graduate, and Phil's a big, Trey Phil's a big part of that. Coach, thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Quick schedule reminder coming up at uh, 11.05, Abilene Christian. The uh, players will start at 11.05, and then the head coach at 11.20. And, yes, the media buffet is scheduled for 11 o'clock, so get ready. Thank you. We'll be back shortly.